Welcome to Unstoppable Podcast with Harry Sardinas, inspiring conversations with influential millionaires, investors, thought leaders, entrepreneurs who are making a massive difference with their innovative products and services and sharing the challenges and wisdom of how they sold their first million. How could you like to achieve your first million? And today we have a special guest, Mark McKay, which is the founder of Rhino Tactical Defense. So Mark, tell us, what are the five steps to make the first million? Well, first is you always have to be positive. You need a good plan. You need to over-deliver. Uh, you, you need to develop the right relationships with, with people, be it your employees or your vendors or your, your prospects. Uh, you need to have the right relationship. You need to listen a lot. You always have to listen and be flexible in what you, in what you hear. Brilliant. And then, Mark, how you decide to become an entrepreneur? I think it was in my blood. My, my father was, uh, he, he worked for a large corporation and always wanted to be his own boss. And eventually he tried to do it, but it never was very successful. But I was groomed to do this from the time I was a young child. And I think I was five years old. We had a broken washing machine that stood out in our front yard and they wanted to have the and trash people come take it away. And I said, no way. I went around the neighborhood and I knocked on every neighbor's door and I wound up selling that broken washer for, for $5. <clears throat> the people came and they took it away and I made a 50 cent commission. Wow. From that point on, I was pretty much hooked on the whole thing because uh, it's just, it's an easy way for you to take control of your own destiny and not worry so much about what other people are doing. Let's focus on what we're doing. And if we're, we're looking ahead and we're driving forward, we really don't have a lot of time for a lot of, uh, you know, secondary stuff that clutters it, that clutters the, the business world. So Mark, but what, 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 why are you were doing this at the beginning? Is because um, you, there was any entrepreneurs in your family or just because you want to buy more candy? Oh, just because... I, I like the process. I, I enjoy the, it's the hunt. It's the kill. You know, I get to go make a deal and close the deal. And, and then I'm paid for, for, for doing the work. I like that part. It's a, it's something that I've never gotten enough of. Uh, I, all through, I can remember being in high school and I would go into wood shop and I would make keychains or I'd make little things. And then I would go sell them throughout the school. So I, I mean, I didn't come from a lot of money, but you know, uh, I could get lunch money. I could, you know, I could augment my my poor teenage years with a few extra dollars with things that I made out of scraps, basically. So but what happened when your parents find out that you were making extra box and you you don't need so much money from them? Did they were happy or they were angry? Well, my my instructor in high school was he thought that was ingenious. He thought it was great because they these were things that they were probably going to wind up throwing away anyway. And I worked it with tools and different things and, and made it something that somebody would want to buy. So uh, it was just one of those things. When I was in the military, uh, I, I would, uh, just before an inspection, I'd, I'd get everybody who wanted to line them up and I'd, I'd give them haircuts with the, with the clippers, you know, get them ready for inspection. So they look just right. Little things like that. And it's, it's been my whole life doing that. Wow. And then... Very business i was off to college and i had a, a yard service where i cut grass and i set it up as a sole proprietorship i had you know write-offs that i had i had things that i had to buy to, to make the business work it was set up purely in a sole proprietorship and i was i think 18 or 19 at the time that was the first real business and it just sort of just kept going from there yeah. Now, Mark, tell us, because we have few entrepreneurs in this uh, on top of our podcast that they run in different businesses. They all have the background in the military. Do you think that the discipline and, and, and some uh, skills of our leadership or, 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 the, the, or the mission, um, do you think that, um, that what you learn in the military have helped you to develop your career as an entrepreneur? 
or do you think that it's totally different? I'd say I got my roots through, you know, my family, but it really was augmented through my time in the military. I really did get to learn a lot about myself, how to focus, how to be more self-disciplined, different things that you really need to, to be a good entrepreneur. You know, you're, you're in charge of it. And if you're easily swayed from what you need to do, well, it turns out that you're not going to be very successful if you get sidetracked all the time because, well, that, that lost episode from that, that old sitcom I like so much is on TV today. So I'm going to, I'm not going to work. I'm going to, I'm going to go over here and watch this. And you really need to stay focused. That discipline is really important. In the military, if you don't stay focused, uh, someone might die, right? That's correct. You have to be on 24 by 7, no matter what, yes. whatever it takes, right? So it becomes part of your life, yes. And, and, So it's, it's a matter of having that self-discipline. And I didn't really have as much of that as I, as I needed until I went into the military. And they, they helped bring that out in me. I mean, I learned a lot there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So tell us about your company. Why do you have this brilliant idea to, to open this company? I love your logo, by the way. I think it's fantastic. Uh, Thank you. And, and goes along with, with, the, with, with the company name. So tell us more about why you decided to open this company and uh, what are the main people that you're helping? Thank you. Well, I've been involved in martial arts and self-defense for most of my adult life. And I got the privilege to work with an innovator in this field and I was side by side with him for 10 years and I learned all about reality-based self-defense which is not martial arts it's about regular people who go out into the world and they're attacked and they they need to know what they can do what makes it uh kind of evens the scale a little bit what do you do if someone attacks you at an ATM or tries to push you into a car or comes to your home and tries to invade it. Well, that's what I really wanted to learn. And that was things that I was more accustomed to from the military years. Uh, I just didn't know there was such a place to, to do that. So when I, I met this gentleman and he, he hired me to run his business because he knew I had a lot of experience running small businesses and he wanted to not be anchored to his desk all the time. He wanted to be able to go pursue other Like you were saying in your last bit, you know, the, uh, Mr. Pearl was talking about uh, being, being able to go look at the next opportunity and do it. So this man wanted to be doing that. He wanted to do some more stuff with his family and his young children. So he left me to run the business. And it got so good that it would get to a point where I, I would only see him a couple hours a week, you know, because, you know, the, the business was flowing just like we were talking about before. It's just, it, it's great if you have quality people that can, that can carry for you, you know? So uh, I got to learn exactly how it all worked. And then in December of 2023, this man unexpectedly passed away. Wow. And I wanted to continue his vision, all right? So uh, I, I worked with him side by side for 10 years and we were also best friends. We did as much traveling together And, you know, extracurricular outside of business uh, every, every week, you know, we did a lot of things together socially and professionally. So when he passed away, uh, some of his family members took over the, the corporation and I, and they changed it and I didn't like what they were doing. And a lot of people oh. with the organization didn't like it. So I was just going to bow out. So I struck out on my own. I created Rhino and I said, let's, let's just, I'll just do it for me one person, but um, when some of the other people from the old company heard about it, they migrated to Rhino. I didn't ask them to. They said, but we've always worked with you. You know your stuff. You're talented. Absolutely, of course. That relationship, all right? So we had them migrate over, and now at the end of the first week, we had 40 members, you know, and they're all over the world doing these courses and seminars and classes for wow. their on a paid basis. So we started off our first day being global. We're in Australia, Canada, and U.S. currently. Wow, congratulations, amazing. So 
it just goes to show you if you develop the right relationships and you treat people well, they will they will stick with you. You know, if you treat people badly, like the new owners who did that, they came they came in and they changed everything, and people didn't like the way they were dealt with, the way the changes were coming. So they said, well, you've always shot us straight, We're sticking with you, right? So I'm doing exactly the same thing I've been doing for 10 years, which is I actually get on airplanes, go around the country and teach different seminars like uh, corporate training, team building, real estate. My favorite wow. is active shooter training. And I go do that, jump on a plane, go to a city and uh, you know, train right at the corporation, you know, training right in their, their, their own offices. You know, because it's a lot more fun to do it that way. And then, um, and that's where they're going to be. If something were to happen, like in an active shooter situation, they're going to be at their work. I could have them come to a location, but then that's not very realistic in the training. And the training is interesting and fun and scenario based. And we actually put people through their paces in a, you know, in a fun manner. So it's a better takeaway. And these are people who never, ever saw themselves really training any sort of a, you know, sophisticated format. This is just good old fashioned sense things that no one ever taught you that you now have options to do. So I learned from a great guy. He taught me. I'm just carrying his vision on because he was my best friend and I respected him and I wanted to, I didn't want it to, to end. I wanted to keep pushing. It's like he handed me the baton and now it's my turn to run with it and I'm going to, I've improved it. I'm making it better every day. Yeah. I can tell. And uh, Mike, let's talk about that because this situation that you share with us is actually very common that we have um, founders and then we have, you know, the people that that have been there um, building the company and, and know exactly the in and out. Yeah. And then okay. some, suddenly pass away or so, suddenly the person retire. Right. And uh, we have a similar case here a friend of mine where they were they were one one party say okay let's let's give the business to the to the daughter yeah but then we we said look don't give the business to your daughter your daughter is no interested in the business she doesn't know how to run it never been there give it to the employee that been there uh, for 10 years because can actually uh Uh, run it and at least keep the name, keep the brand, keep the 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 initial idea, keep the customer base, and uh, because otherwise, um, um, it 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 is very difficult for uh, for a family member that they don't have experience in the business, they haven't been there beaten, they have been there in the daily operations. How do you think they're gonna take over an existing business is gonna make this successful? It doesn't doesn't make mathematical sense, yeah. Uh, but it happened often and huh? always is the same, Mark. I hear a lot of stories, it's always the same thing. Family comes, okay, I'm taking this over, um, it's a disaster. And uh, the first thing that they do is you know disregard um all the opinions of or, or everything that they current people that that been doing there know how to do the stuff exactly like you said you know your best friend and and you guys were running the company together but anyway the good thing about is that um somehow you managed to to follow the to continue the the initial idea from your friend and and now you are you are carrying the button the, and And getting this bigger, I I think that um, that for team building this is amazing because you can uh, you can um, when you debrief you know I think that when you do this exercise we do a lot of corporate training as well so every time that we play a game um, we observe them and the way they play the game we already know in the team who's selfish who's this who's that who who is more uh, Uh, time for the who who cares more for the team, so we can get a lot um, when we do corporate training and they play the games and we see how they play in that game and after we debrief the games and and we can spot really quickly the problems in the organization in that way. 
in the same way of you, Mark, when you start to train them, uh, you can you can have some insights about that team, and you can design exercise to to bring them together, right? Sure, and it's not just corporations; it gets to houses of worship, it gets to campuses and universities and schools of all types and government municipal buildings. There's there's no there's no shortage of places that can benefit from this style of training. And it really adds to morale. It adds an opportunity for people to get to know each other better and develop a teamwork type of an effort because if it gets down to it and something really does happen, uh, then you've already worked together. Your mind already has a place to reference that. You're not just a deer in the headlines. You've you've experienced this before, so it makes it very, very easy to, to duplicate that memory, you know? So, uh, the other part is I really enjoy having new people sign up to become owners on their own right and help them get certified and, and learn how to do this and then help them set up their businesses and launch and show them the most cost-effective ways to get started and, and really start to maximize their profits right away and reinvest in their business and build. Uh, I've got a woman in Seattle, Washington, that we were just on another uh, podcast earlier this week. Within two weeks, she had made back her initial investment. She had made back the deposit on her new space that she was using for business. And here we are with her eight months later, and she she's uh, getting ready to to quit her corporate job because she's pretty much replaced the income already because she's listening to the training. She's being a part of the the procedure and we have a really good plan and that's the best part of it you guys <laughs> been doing it long enough you do know your stuff and the, um, then then mark let's talk about this i'm glad that you talk about women we need more women we need uh more women uh more women as as uh, running the businesses but we also need more women to be enrolling your program so they can have more self-esteem and let's face it, if one day they, they get attacked, they can actually defend this themselves. So what is your view in, in, in getting more women on board, not only as a trainer, but also as a client? You know, I, I can't 100% put my finger on it, but in our membership, we're pretty close to 50% women as owners. Really? And, you know, and I guess it's because it's easy for them to, to learn this skill set and be empowered and they want to share that with, with others. In most cases, women call me and they want to they want to start with teaching women's groups or women that have been, you know, through Yeah, maybe med- women feel more comfortable learning from women, correct? They love that. I don't I don't know. I don't know. That's not my favorite model, but it they seem to really enjoy that. So that's fine. But what you find is, you know, men, men have a real uh, kind of a shortcoming themselves is that they, they never feel like they need this style of training. They need, they don't need to be able, because they're dudes, they're guys, they're, you know, they're, well, I know a lot of men who can't punch their way out of a brown paper bag. So, you know, just the fact that you're male really doesn't mean anything to you, you know, but um, there's not, there's not any demographic walk on the earth that, that can't benefit. We, we teach people about criminal intent. We teach them how criminals hunt and what makes them a victim and, you know, all the different things that you can look at so you can improve your odds. The situation awareness is number one. If you're aware of what's going on around you, you can stop a lot of things before they ever start, you know, so that's where we start. And then from there, it builds as things get progressively worse. We have a, a more progressive answer for whatever stage of the event you're in. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I have a friend the other day was sharing with me that when he was young in London, this happened in London, um, he he's a, one of the video recorders from, from, for our events. And he told me that when he was young, he went to film uh, um, a, big, uh, a big event, right? And after he finished, he took the camera and then he went he went away and apparently his camera were back in the day very expensive and and he got attacked and he sent them uh, to hospital because of this 
and uh, and I think when, when I spoke with him, he was he was telling me about this about the awareness. He was saying, Harry, you know, I just finished. I took my camera and I left. And if I was more aware of what was going on, uh, what type of people was in that event, and they all knew that I have that camera and the camera was a lot of money, and then I left without anybody. I, he was telling me that, uh, that unconsciously he put himself in very vulnerable position and, and he got attacked badly and uh, he ended up in, in the hospital because he 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 didn't want to let the camera go and, and he was the uh, situation was like maybe six or eight people. Uh, yeah, well, you have to remember he, that that's, that's just stuff, okay? So you're not going to put your life up against things, all right? Your life is way more valuable than anything you... Absolutely. Have, anything you're driving or anything that's in your pocket. If you lose your wallet, you can have everything in there replaced online within a couple of hours. You can turn off credit cards. You can get a new driver's license. You can get everything replaced. It's not worth your life. Someone set, puts a knife to your throat and says, give me your wallet. Here, give it. I, I just want to survive. All right. So yeah, I'm exactly. For That's the best advice that, that, um, that everybody uh, I can hear about this. I agree 100% with you. Because sometimes the people are not aware of the, of, of the consequences. Like my friend, he didn't want to let that go, the camera. Well, they almost killed him. Your life is not worth it. Let it go. You know, uh, if, if unless you can do, you can do what you need to do. But most people have never raised their, their hands to another person ever in their life. Why would they think that now is a good time to start doing that? It's just, it's Absolutely. Not. <laughs> so, give it. Here. It's yours. I will get another one, or I got insurance on it. If your if your friend was smart, he had it insured, and you could get it. You know, got stolen. I need another one. You know, there's things that you could do about that. Mm -hmm. So never never put your life up against things. You know, it's just stuff, and then stuff can always be replaced. Okay, Mike, tell us um, what is the uh, because it's completely different ball game to have a local business, like a global business that you have, going from local to global. Uh, tell us about this journey, how it has been, what would be your, what has been your biggest challenge and how you overcome that challenge? The biggest, I, I like to use the term global. I don't know if that's a really a word or not, but I love that I word. like it. So it's global and local. Uh, I want everyone to feel like they have a local business, no matter what country, you know, I've, I've had uh, contacts in Australia and New Zealand and South Africa, and uh, I'm working right now in in uh, Dubai and Kenya, and I can't remember the other one, but there's a there's an island out there in, this, in the, the Dead Sea that's like Mardius, I can't remember, um, something like that. But we're working on all these different things. I have had people in Spain and the Caribbean, we had two in England, one in London. And so the thing with that is every market is different. So you need to find a way to globally serve all of your members, but individualize or localize the training for each different country and market. Because things that make sense to us here in the United States don't always resonate where you are. Well, you're in, you're in England, right? And yes. So you have different phrases and terms for so many things that uh, it doesn't resonate, you know, for you. If I say it this way and I say it the same way for you in London, you'll go, what that, what, what does that mean? You know, and mm -hmm. it's the same in Australia and their, their sensibilities in Australia, they're, they're much more severe as a culture than we are in America. Everything triggers us in America. You know, I don't like that. I'm offended. I'm actually off here every day, but, in Australia, it doesn't seem like anything offends them. They'll put things on, on TV and radio and commercials, and you'll go, wow, they let you get away with that? you know. But we had had to work things over where a phrase in the U.S. would have to be altered around in different countries so it, it matched the culture. That's probably been one of the biggest challenges. Big challenge. Very big, big challenge. The other is, is, is trying to get 
uh, the printed material translated. Sometimes that's a real headache. So those are probably the two biggest. Yeah. Then, Mark, tell us, um, if people are listening to this podcast and they want to become a trainer or they want to, to be a student of you guys, how they can find you and how the process works? Sure. Well, the first thing is you can go to the main website, which is rhinotacticaldefense.com. All right. So um, I don't, do you, uh, am I allowed to share my screen with you? Yeah, of course you can. This is a video. I can show you exactly where to go if it's okay with you. Yeah, yeah absolutely. All right. Yeah. All right. so, so we visit the website. Screen two. Yes. You also have to speak, Mark, because uh, it's, it's also will be audio, so the people that are listening can, can Absol see. It. Absolutely. Uh, so what I'm waiting for to queue up for you is the, the, the landing page, the, the front page of the website. And hopefully you can see it now. I can see it, yeah. All right, and this is, this is rhinotacticaldefense.com. And across the top, there's the kind of thing, the, the programs that we teach. There's a little history about it. Here are the, the you know, locations around uh, that we have currently. I love the, the website. Very good, very clean. Very good job. There is the, the U.S. and Canada. Wow, a lot of locations in U.S. and Canada, man. Eh? In the U.S., for sure. Wow. So, uh, all across here is, is ways to contact. There's different things that we got on. We have a store here that we call it the Pro Shop. This is where all of our people, you know, get their, their supplies. And this is how you learn more about it. Okay, so this is the tab called Get Rhino Certified. And this is... Everything that there's a video, I say hi. If you're here, you're you're really interested in what we're doing. There's there's the one-time buy-in, and then there's a uh, one twenty-five per month membership fee. That's all, no more than that. Uh, this is what you get for for your buy-in and your membership fee. You get certified. You get on to our online training library, the complete business system, and you can schedule a call to talk with me directly. And then there's PayPal buttons that you can just go right ahead. And if you want to sign up, you can. If you have more questions, well, I've got FAQs. I've got the license agreement and the terms of use all here, too, so you can go through all of that. This is another product that we are currently developing called Rhino Fitness Kickboxing. And this was really popular in the old company. So I've reworked it and redone it so we could continue it in this I, one. And that, I, I, I like it. Uh, that's the modern. That where are you going from here? What's the new? This is the new. This is the next part. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah, the kickboxing is brilliant. I think that also help people how to to do weight weight loss, right? Sure. That, that's all fitness and weight loss for that one. Uh, yeah. It's a great product into the other the other side of it, the self defense side. This is the online training portal. All of our members have access to. Uh, how to set up your office, marketing, and sales. These are sales. This is all objection and, and how to counter all of that. These are recorded business meetings that I have every Wednesday. Then this is how to teach the programs, the different programs themselves. And then we're adding to this all the time. We're adding to it every week. We put something wow. new in. So as, as we develop and as we come up with new ideas, we share them with our network because – we want you to have every different advantage, you know? So if we learned it, we want you to have it. If you have something that you learned, share it with us. We're always open. The, 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 my boss had an old saying that he used all the time, and it, it was a funny saying. He'd say, better is better, you know? And he was right. So if you have a better way, I'm all ears. I'm smart enough to know that I need to listen to what other people have to say. I've learned some of the best things about business just by – by listening to ideas that other people have. So we're always looking for new members. We're looking for ways for people to, to join up and empower their communities, their cities, their countries. Because you, you, know, you can have as many of these set up anywhere that you want to. It's just that whatever you're looking to do, 
We want to help make you successful. And it's very rewarding work. When you give people the power to take control, it's so rewarding. And this is on both ends of this. If I, if I help someone go into business, it's so rewarding for me. If you're working with your community and you teach them how to survive a potentially deadly event, it's so rewarding for you, you know, and it's just, it's, there, this is a very positive, upbeat. It can save their life. It can actually save their life just because they have a minimal training. And probably the solution is not even fight, but you need to have the training to know what to do. Yes. And when, and, and what to say. And uh, big one. Exactly. And what, and what to say, because if you say the right words at the right time, it might save your life. And, yes. uh, and uh, but also, uh, it's, it's the, the part of confidence, right? I think that, you know, when people have lack of confidence in themselves and they go through this type of training, they become more confident. And, you know, when you have lack of confidence, this is showing off everywhere. It's showing off in your bank account, it's showing off in your relationship, it's showing off at school, it's showing up uh, in your workplace, showing off everywhere. And if uh, people that are kind of road to this type of training, they're going to gain self-confidence that that self-confidence can show, start to show up in also different areas with the, with, of the life, with the relationship with the children, with the relation with the community, with the relation with the clients, if they are entrepreneurs. So, and also the other part of the confidence that I like a lot is this rhino kick boxing that you are, uh, that you are establishing right now. Somebody, I actually want to, <laughs> to start boxing soon. Right. Somebody told me that it's brilliant to lose weight. Apparently when you do like that a lot, it will, it will, uh, it will your belly is going to go uh, down really quickly. I, I've been told that, so I want to try out. So what, what, what is the, the future plan for the Rhino kickboxing in terms of more self-confidence and, and, uh, and, uh, and also weight loss, uh, which is also give confidence to people, right? Everything about this deals with a person's confidence and ability to feel good about themselves, whether you're going into business, whether you're protecting yourself or your loved ones, whether you're getting yourself in better shape, all part of a very positive process. And it's very modest to be in this business. It doesn't take a lot of uh, money. It doesn't take, it takes a good amount of time at the beginning, but then as you put your systems in place, you find that you're working a lot less and, and you're, enjoying your life a lot more because you're not working for, you know, some heartless corporation that really doesn't care. You know, you know, as long as the numbers are there, that's all they care about. Well, I'm a people person. I'm not really, I can tell about money. I'm more about mission. I am all about I can tell. what excites That's why me. you're going to do so well. Oh, that's right. why you're doing so well. Yeah. Well, I, can I, see, I can see that your eyes are shining when you talk about the topic because you know what this stuff can do to people. I work with confidence a lot with the, we help people to overcome the fear of public speaking, which is one of the biggest fear, probably the biggest fear that the human being can have. And uh, so we, we work with the people, we train them and, and, and we gave them the confidence back. Uh, so I, you know very well what this type of job, of job, the big difference that can create for the people. And it's not about it, you know, even uh, if they get attacked or not, but this uh, work on the, working on themselves, improving the same confidence, they can, um, some of them may buy, but they go to this training and then they decide that they're gonna quit the job. They're going to quit the marriage. They're going to, because they already have more um, self-awareness and confidence in themselves that they can live the life or, uh, that they deserve. And, and that's the whole point. So it's very rewarding uh, job. So some of them will be back with the partner. You name it, right? Yes, sir. It's wonderful to be able to wake up in the morning and say, what cool thing will I be doing today that I, I wouldn't be doing if I was uh, riding a desk somewhere or at some cubicle or, you know, I look what I get to do today. I'm going to go, I'm going to go work with a hundred people at a corporation and empower them. And when they leave there, we will add so much value to their lives and it will help add more value to my life, you know, and, 
So it's a it's a very also without value to the company as well. Well, that's of course true. You know. Will increase sales for sure. <laughs> and it all depends on what person is looking to do. Not everyone is looking to swing for the, the fences. I mean, some people they have a, a a another career. They have a day job they really love, but they'd love to have some extra money to to uh, to buy another car or take absolutely. Fancy. Well, I can cater to those people as well. If you're looking for an extra 50k to 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 have some some mad money, you could do that too. Or you can make six figures, seven figures with this business. It's all up to you what you want, and I'll help you get to whatever goal you're searching for. Thank you so much, Mark. Mark, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for your time that you spent with us. I really appreciate it and for all of you listening to us in um, Spotify, Apple or our social media see you in our next episode of Honest Top of How Brave Entrepreneur like Mark break that wall and achieve the first million. Bye for now. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Follow us for more interviews with world's most influential audacious entrepreneurs that overcame challenges and adversity, providing you with the blueprint of how they sold their first million so you can grow your business exponentially.